everyone needs to eat. Whatever your reason for coming to Gloomhaven, out here on the edge of the world, that simple fact is never going to change. A mercenary can't fight on an empty stomach. So when Jexera, a Valreth woman wearing a red cloak and enough gold jewelry to keep you fed for a decade, approaches you in the Sleeping Lion and offers to pay you ten gold coins to track down the thief and retrieve some stolen goods, well, it seems like as good an excuse as any to sober up and start paying off your tab. This thief has taken some important documents, says the red-skinned merchant, her tail whipping about in agitation. I don't care what you do to him, just bring back what is mine. Based on Jexera's description, it was easy enough to knock around a few alley thugs and get a location of the thieves' hideout. You don't find yourself as a mercenary way out in Gloomhaven without knowing how to crack a few skulls. So your target is the Black Barrow. Sounds like a lovely place. So now we got to choose our quests. Yep, yep, so we've got a couple of things to do. Um, one, when you create a new character, you get given uh, two personal quest cards, and you have to choose between them. They will both uh, give you the option to unlock something when it's completed, and they will also uh, usually, or they will also retire your character. So as soon as you complete your character's personal quest, that's kind of like his lifelong Lo man, God, this is terrible. As soon as you complete <laughs> your character's personal quest, that's like their life achievement. So they're like, alright guys, I'm out, I don't need to adventure anymore, and they're gone. And you get to make a brand new character. There's a few things uh, kind of involved in doing that, but I'm just going to go ahead and pull up my personal quest now and let you guys read them. I'm not going to read them out loud because they are secret from the other player. Uh, well, uh, I could step away from the mic and you can read it for the sake of the video. Yeah, sure. If you want to step away for like 30 seconds or so. Yeah, I'm just going to put my mic down and uh, just like wiggle your hand in front of, of Craghart here. Okay. Okay. All right. So I've got Seeker of Zorn. Even as a child, you could fill the call of Zorn. Once worshipped as a god, his flock has long since been destroyed and disbanded. But you can hear him calling. You will travel to Gloomhaven as he commands. You will find his remains and set him free. The plague will once again be embraced. I have to complete three crypt scenarios and then unlock the noxious cellar and follow it to conclusion. And it unlocks a new character. I also have pounds of flesh, a baby silent among the charred remains of a once vibrant village. Your silence is the one thing that kept you alive. The townspeople were warned the area was unsafe, but they built anyway. Then the Vermlings came and killed everyone. Everyone but the baby. But now that baby is grown and wants revenge. That baby's me, and I need to kill 15 Vermlings, which are basically like rat people, to unlock a character. Of these two, this sounds more fun, so I'm going to be a Seeker of Zorn. So we'll just... Get that ready for the discard pile, and let Kevin know that he's good to come back. Okay, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Alright, okay. so if you want to step away from your mic, and I'll read mine. Sounds good to me. Okay. And I'm gone. And he's gone. The thin places. The air is thin in Gloomhaven. Well, not the air exactly. But whatever is behind the air. Six side snares. This is the one I have in real life. Okay, like there is something on the other side, pressing and scratching to get out. This troubles you greatly. You have decided to travel a number of locations in the surrounding area to study the phenomenon further. With luck, the air won't get any thinner. Okay, I have this one in real life. I'm currently doing this side quest, or this uh, objective IRL, so I'm not gonna do that one. Oops. So, there... Okay. Lawbringer. There is only order and chaos. That which is tamed and controlled, and that which has yet to be. Gloomhaven is in chaos. That needs to be controlled. And the first place to start is the rampant lawlessness of the surrounding wilds. Of course, the Vermlings don't know any better, but humans who go against the laws of man deserve no sympathy. Kill 20 bandits and or cultists. Heck yeah. I, okay, that's really good, because the early... Yes, uh-huh. Yep. And I'm back. Dude, I have such a good one. So do I. I I'm love it. I'm so ready. Like, we could retire early. <laughs> Same, actually. So, I'm putting mine just here, and that's basically where I'm going to keep it. Uh, and then next to that, you guys see that we have another two cards. Those are our... What are they actually called? Um, I call Battle them... Card. Battle goals. 
Oh yeah, what I called call? them like your your f- what you do for the fight. It's like your fight achievement. There you go. So yeah, these are battle goals, fight achievements, however you want to say it. Uh, every time that we start a new scenario, we get dealt two of these and basically do the same thing. Uh, we choose between them. It is also meant to be secret, but as you're looking at these cards, you notice that they have a check mark. So that check mark shows you uh, goes down to the check marks here on the bottom right of my screen. I just tried to point like you could see it. And uh, basically, if you complete one of these goals, you get however many check marks are down there. I think that there are only one and two check mark cards. I've never seen anything higher. Uh, but yeah, basically, if you do that during the scenario, you get that check mark. And if you get three check marks uh, saved up, you get to unlock the perks above it, which are always usually really good. Yeah. Uh, usually you really want to hang on to the double checkers, but these single checkers that I have are super easy for this first scenario. Yeah, I got two single checkers, and I'm going to go with this one and get rid of the other one. And since you can do... Thi- I Oh, I deleted my quest card. Was that bad? Oh, uh-oh. Yep, that was bad. Uh-oh. Uh, I mean, it's quest card, so I guess we're not going to be getting a ton of them, but... We, should we could always respawn, respawn this, right? Yeah, I'm fairly certain there's a way to respawn it. If not, I can load up a new game, save the object, and bring it in. I'm so sorry. That's okay. Okay, right. so this one goes here? Yep. I mean, we're um, not going to retire a lot of characters, honestly. Yeah, right. And then I'm going to put my battle goal down there as well. Battle goal. So there's only a couple more things that we kind of have to get done. Uh, you can see on my side that I've already done one of them. Uh, when you create a new character, starting out at level 1, you get 30 gold to spend. There is a list of recommended items for your character, which I have chosen to take for mine because they're honestly really good. Yep. So I'm starting out with the Minor Power Potion, which means that during an attack, I can burn this card, which basically means remove it from the game, uh, to add plus 1 attack damage to my entire attack action, which my character is all about AoEs and big hits, so uh, it's really good. And then I also have the Cloak of Invisibility. During my next turn, uh, I am invisible. Uh, or during my turn, I gain invisible, which goes until the end of the my, end of my next turn. And then it yep, burns this card. Now, this is really good because of the way monsters work when you open up a room. So I can always open up a door and move into a room and not take any damage. Whereas if somebody else that can't go invisible opens up a door, there's a strong likelihood that they might just get punched in the face immediately very hard. Hard. Yes, and it's so much fun. So for Kevin, if you want to take a look at the shop... I need uh, can... uh, boots of striding and a minor power potion, which is what right, is recommended. Let me show you how that works. Come over to the left side of the table. <laughs> Click right here where it says shop offer. Oh, that's easy. Okay, I got it. Uh, no, 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 don't search. Don't search. Why not? Because I'm going to show you... I'm... All right, cool. So <laughs> Sorry. Click this button. And all the cards come up here and lay out. Uh, oh, okay. And then so I need a minor power potion. Shop. It just involves, like, less moving. And the boots of striding. Alright, and then when you're done, you can click that same button, and everything comes back to our shop over here. What did you press? Oh, just like, oh, layout cards. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Are we ready for the first scenario? Not quite. We are technically in Gloomhaven. We just got Gaven, or Gaven, boy, it's been a long time. So hot. So (laughs) hot. We just got given our first goal, so we're heading out to the Black Barrow. But before we head out, anytime that you're in town, you have the option to do a town quest. uh, I do. Let's do a town quest. A town event. Oh, wait, we have to say our names first. Yeah, actually, we are skipping a couple of things. So I am... Valara, an orchid spellweaver. Who are you? Uh, dream it. I need a name. Uh, uh. <laughs> it's a stream. I gotta get them involved. That's true. Um, here. Actually, let me yell to my wife. This is great content. Great content. Beautiful. Best content. Great content. Taryn. All right. Okay. My my wife says I can't I can't be little Joe, I have to be Thrixen. 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 I am Thrixen, the Cragheart. Da 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 da. Oh, I mean, that's my back. Oh. <laughs> when you look at my footage, this is gonna be really funny. How do I turn? How do I? 
how do I turn him towards me? Well, I don't know if you can. I I hit alt over him and it's just his back. Yeah. Rest in peace. My name is Rickson. Alright. <laughs> That's my favorite thing. I'm sorry. So as we're leaving the city, we decide we to have a city event. We decide to head to the Brown Door for the evening to enjoy a quattro concert. Corruption and crime run rampant in the bar, but the music is unmatched in all of Gloomhaven. You are enjoying yourself immensely when you catch a glimpse of a man in a dark, tattered robe near the back of the room. He appears to be handing vials full of red liquid, le, blah, red liquid to a second man. We get two options. Option A, we further investigate the exchange between the men. Or option B, leave the criminal element alone and continue enjoying the show. Okay, so how do you, are, are we a lawful group? I am not a lawful character, I can tell you that right now. Okay, well, according to my secret quest of secrecy, <laughs> I want to further investigate the exchange between the men. I also want to further investigate the exchange between the men. Okay, that's so, it. So, flip the card over and change Ooh. state. Oh, it blurs it so you don't accidentally spoil yourself? That's right. Oh, so, that's beautiful. This so, is so well done. We both chose option A. Uh, we subtly, subtly move in the direction of the men, monitoring their actions with your peripheral vision. You recognize the dark robes from the run-ins you've had with cultists in the area, oh, yep. and as you get closer, you become convinced that the vials being traded contain blood. You grab Ooh. the men and cause a huge amount of commotion as you fight to drag them outside and foil their dealings. You are able to hand them off to the proper authorities, but it may be a while before you are allowed back in the brown door. The concert was ruined. Gained to reputation. Yes! That's so good! Alright, so that goes onto the bottom of the city deck. Reputation goes over on the left, right? That's uh, on our on our group on yeah, our group thing. Reputation is right here on our party sheet. Which Yay. by the way, you can see that we are the last jackals. We are currently in Gloomhaven. And we have spots for party achievements and text notes, and Kevin can come down here and type his name in. Oh. Uh Uh, I can't zoom in anymore. You've got to zoom in off of it. Yeah, there we go. Got it. So my name is... It's not letting me change it. I think you uh, have to. How do you spell your name? Uh, T-H-R-I-X-O-N. O-N? Yeah, Thrixen. There you go. All right, our party is ready. Uh, so, any time that you leave Gloomhaven, now that we have uh, turned some evil cultists over to the proper authorities, and head to another event, you must do a road card, uh, which is basically the exact same thing as the city event, but just things that happen on the road. So on our road first... Again? That's right. Our first road event is... You have only just wandered off the main road in search of your destination when the ground begins to shift beneath, beneath your feet. What was once solid now gives way, and you find yourself falling down into a dark pit. You land twenty feet down, cushioned by the soil that fell with you. You stand up with alertness and look around, trying to get your bearings. You have fallen into a man-made cavern with smooth stone walls and floors. This could be a trap, or just some long-forgotten structure. Option A. Use weights and ropes to climb out of the hole as quickly as possible. Or, option B. Explore the area. Dude, there might be cultists. Let's go fight yeah, them. We're 100% exploring the area. Option B. Yep, let's fight him. Alright. B. Lighting a torch, you see a number of passages leading out of the stone room. Unfazed, you head down one of them and begin exploring the network of chambers. In, oof. In one, you find a pedestal and sitting atop that, a small metal sphere. You take the strange sphere and continue your search, but the only other remarkable thing you find is an exit. Add city event number 71 to the deck... And we all start the scenario with one damage. Aww. That's okay. We got a new city event. That's neat. You just gotta be back. So, I take So, mine damage. is... Goes from... 10 and to 9. Don't forget, we've got this player area up here that we can use to edit as well. That's... True. Oh, yeah, yeah. Am I technically player 3? Yes. Okay. Alright, so we need to come over here to these extra, uh, what are they called, extra road events, 
Um, what did that say? Seventy-one. Uh, yeah, seventy-one. So now, after all of that, we finally made our way to the Black Barrow. The hill is easy enough to find. A short journey past the New Market Gate, and you see it jutting out on the edge of the corpse wood, looking like a rat under a rug. Moving closer, you see the mound is formed from a black earth. Its small, overgrown entrance presents a worn set of stone stairs leading down into the darkness. As you descend, you gratefully notice light emanating from below. Unfortunately, the light is accompanied by the unmistakable stench of death. You contemplate what kind of thieves would make their camp in such a horrid place as you reach the bottom of the steps. Here, you find your answer. A rough group of cutthroats who don't seem to have taken very kindly to your sudden appearance. One in the back matches the description of your quarry. Take care of these unfortunates, he says, backing out of the room. You can vaguely make out his silhouette as he retreats down a hallway and through a door to his left. Well, it's not every day we get people stupid enough to hand deliver their valuables to us, grins one of the larger bandits, unsheathing a rusty blade. We'll be killing you now. Jokes on them. If you had any valuables, you probably wouldn't be down here in the first place. <laughs> Zinger! All right, so now uh, we have the first room generated, and we can place our minis on any of these starting spots. Fight me. Bam. You sure quit. you don't want to be behind me? Oh, no, no, you got to be within a range of three. Yeah, so I can get my big stuff off. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, this so. is like the only time I've ever like summoned the hand shower, because like you kind of need it. Yeah. Right. In Destiny, you just always have it turned off because it's annoying. Yeah. Um. All right. So I I kind of want to use turn one as a setup turn. So, so you you want to like set up the set up the room because they're probably gonna walk towards us. Well, less likely. set up the room and more just set up my abilities. So I kind of want to get my uh, buffs up and moving. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. All allies and enemies adjacent to the I can I can imbue the room with some energy for you. And do some serious splash damage. Okay. Uh, well, if you can generate some... Can you generate fire by any chance? I can only generate grass and wind. Cool. Well, if you can generate either one of those, I might be able to use it next round. Okay. So, I like this move. And... Actually, hold on. Uh, how fast can you generate wind? Uh, how f uh, not wind. Earth. Earth? Oh, I thought you said wind. Um, actually, I can... No, wait, this is better. Uh, 50... 53, I think. It'll be 53? Or 20... Oh, I can't be that exact, can I? No, yeah, yeah, that's right. We're supposed Sorry. to say, like, quarters or something like that. Sorry. Um, I can... In the second quarter. Second quarter? Early second quarter. Early second quarter. Alright, uh, so I'm going to change one of the things that I'm doing. I need that wind, and I'm going to go slow. It needs to be wind? Yes. I can do that. Um, and then I put it on player three, and the card that I want to go first... Okay, got it. That's not the card. Rockwell. Yep. All okay. Right. So as soon as we're both ready, uh, I pull up the battle interface and we click start round. Yep. And then you should see the initiative tracker giving the guards a movement of 15, us a movement of 29 and 91. Okay, so guard goes first. All right. So guard doesn't move. They just shield up and then attack. So that's nice. Um, so the way enemy movement works in this game is elites, these yellow guys, uh, will move first, and then the other guys in the room will move in number order. So had they moved, this guy would have moved up, done his stuff, and then this guy would have moved up and done his stuff. Um, but luckily they're not 
uh, moving this turn. They're just kind of buffing themselves up and attacking if there had been anything nearby. So we can move on to the Cragheart. Okay, Cragheart is going to uh, move to and all adjacent anim allies... Oh, no, I'm not doing that first. I can do it in any order I want. That's right. So I'm going to attack three at a range of three in a Mickey Mouse formation and disarm all of them. Boom. All right, so, cool. That's amazing. Um, so one, two, three. Now, this isn't... The, they're not in a Mickey Mouse formation, so I'm going right. to target you can hit here. At least two of them. Target here to hit uh, four and six. So they're disarmed, right? No matter what, yep. even if I crit fail? Uh, I believe so. Uh, yeah, we can double check that. Uh, where's where do I flip my card? Oh, draw. So you can modifier. actually. I there see you go. It. So plus one. I'm attacking the elite first, I guess. Yeah. Um. So that does four damage to the elite. I got the health. One. Disarms two, three, him. Four. Gives me an and experience. And then. Uh, and then again. What I get? And that was a plus zero? A plus zero, so I do three damage. Three? To and the he's non disarmed. And he's disarmed. I imbue the room with air. Nope, oh, hold on. You got this fancy thing. Create air. Aww. <laughs> but I just did that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and now I'm going to move two, and all adjacent enemy uh, allies and enemies suffer one damage. One, Beautiful. two, one damage to the elite, and one damage to the non-elite number, whatever his number. Number five. Number five. Okay, cool. So, like, I did massive freaking stuff for you. All um, right, so now the spell weaver moves. Lost. And I am going to go ahead and summon a mystic ally. Oh, so yay! I summon really good. a guy right here. And then this is going to go into my active zone. And then I also activate crackling air, so my next four attacks will get plus two damage because I consume the air that you just created. Nice. And then Does this your... is my active. Does your ally have summoning sickness? Uh, so they always activate before you do anything, so when you summon them, their turn is already ended, basically. Okay. Alright, so that is the entire first round. We click on start round, or hold on, end round. And... On the battle interface. Yeah, uh, why is it not... There we go. And then you have to make sure to discard... Oh, no, this has to go to active, doesn't it? Yep, both of my guys are on active. Why didn't it go to active? Uh, it's inactive. It just might be visually glitched for you. Okay. Okay. So that was an entire round of Gloomhaven. Uh, pretty simple once you get down to it. It's basically choosing two cards and then doing the top of one and the bottom of the other. And now we just rinse and repeat until we kill everything. Because I believe the goal for this mission is just kill all enemies. Yeah, it's route, route all enemies, yeah. Alright, so I'm pretty well protected with Kevin up there and those other guys being disarmed. Uh, Kevin, can you do like a lot of single target damage to Bandit 5? I think I can. I think I can. If you do that, I can guarantee a kill on these guys. Uh, guarantee? Yeah. Well, of course, assuming I don't draw a crit miss. So, I'm going to be choosing this card to go first. And then, that's going to be my top card. So now I'm looking at the bottoms. Uh, I don't think I'm going to need to worry about healing Kevin this turn, because we took no damage last turn, and... Uh, they are disarmed, so they're not going to get any attacks this turn. Uh, except for the guy right in front of them. So I think... Yeah, that is a good point. So I don't need that card. Do I just want to set up... So I'm relatively certain... Oh, that's going to burn a lot of cards if I do that, though. So let's not do that. Um... Oh, wait. I can do it. Does that lose the card? No, that doesn't lose the card. Please excuse me. Take your time. I am going to use If it's a this range of three, card. I can attack something in my face, right? Um, so yes, but if you're doing a ranged attack, 
then if you're attacking the guy that's next to you, you get uh, muddled. So you have to draw two and take the worst card. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Anytime uh, you range attack something that's next to you. Okay, so then I will do that. And... Man, I just don't know which one. Um, that one's fine as my second one. This one's fine as my first. Okay. All right. So click on start round. Oh man, they're so fast. <laughs> and they're. Moving oh, it's the same thing. Again. Oh, because it shuffled and had to go in there, and now they're doing that again. Neat. Yeah, so now they attack and poison me. Alright, so, uh, in order, this guy is disarmed, then this guy would be disarmed. He doesn't move, he gets shielded. And now this guy, bandit number five, is it? Is. Yep. Let's see. He shields. Did we up. a lot for shields for last round? Hmm. Did we a oh, lot for shields? Oh, you know what? We round? totally didn't, so they each have one more health. Yep. Thank you for calling that out. Uh, so, where is the modifier on his attack? He gets a plus one on you. Okay, so I am poisoned and take... Ooh, ooh, that's weird. So, his base attack it's... is two. So, so three. So... Okay, I have six health. And you're poisoned. And I'm poisoned. So poison means um, that if you were to get healed, you don't heal any health. It just heals the poison. Uh, it stays on you until you get healed. And any time that you're attacked, you take one extra damage from the attack. Yep. I, it's not what I think poison should be. Like, I don't like the poison mechanic. I agree. I feel like the wound mechanic is what poison should be. Exactly. And, and that's what makes you so mad. Yeah. All right. So... Craghart's up next. Okay, so Craghart is going to attack three and mobilize and imbue with air or with earth. Um, so attack for three. Uh, plus two, plus two. five damage, minus, minus one, one for the shield. So four. And he's disarmed. I will grab that. Okay. Or not disarmed. He's immobilized. Yeah. And then and I get to immobilized move. means that uh, on their next turn, whether they move or not, they would lose it. And then if they were to move, they just don't. Uh, for three, I think I should just move here. Here? Or here. So I'm still in range uh, of the door, but like he, it, he won't be able to attack me. Right. Okay. Sounds good to me. Um, so if you're done with your turn, it comes over to me. And... Um, let's see here. So, my first thing that happens is my Mystic Ally does its stuff first. Uh, yep. Its stats are on the bottom of this card, so it has a 2 movement. Uh, it has a range of 2 and, and a damage of 3. Uh, also That's a health really of great. 2. Um, do, do you know, Kevin, do I get the XP on this when I play it, or when it gets, uh, like, removed? It's It's on play, because what happens is, if you look at the order of it, the experience comes before it goes to your round. Gotcha. Perfect. Yep. Alright, uh, so in that case, it has a range of two, I said, which means that it is in range of the elite guard, the elite. so it's going to make its attack without moving. So AI basically means that it is as lazy as it can possibly be. If it doesn't have to move, it won't. So it's doing a base attack of three, and uh, I've actually never used summons, Kevin. Do you know if they use our... Uh, player cards, or how does that work? Um, they do use your player cards. They're extensions of you. Okay. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Double check that. I'm going to play if it as, is it as if it does for this round. So it's okay. doing an attack of three, blocking one from shield. So two damage to the elite. And that's its turn. So now me, let me see. This is a range of three. One, two, three. One, two, so I'm going to need to first. One, two, puts me one, two, three, one, two, three. Perfect. So if I move to here with this card's movement, then I will be in range. 
so that gets discarded. And, and using the player's attack modifier deck to perform its attacks. Perfect, good to know. Alright, and then I'm going to Fire Orb. So, Fire Orb targets three enemies, dealing a base damage of three to each one. Uh, I gain one XP for each enemy targeted, so I'm targeting three things, so I get three XP. Yep, because you're lit. Uh, I am also dealing a plus one damage to all of my attacks because of Crackling Air. So we're going to start with the Elite. So I'm No, doing... it's plus two. It's plus That's two right. because you imbued... Yep. So I'm doing five base damage to the Elite, drawing my attack modifier... So I'm doing he's six dead. damage to him, so he's dead. Go ahead and grab the coins for me. Uh, if I knew where they were... Uh, there they are. I am going to attack this guy next. Base damage of five. So five damage kills him. Then base damage of five on bandit guard four. For six damage kills him. Wow. And that's the spell weaver, guys. OP. <laughs> So, um, do we delete these guys? Uh, yeah, we can just straight delete them. So a couple of things for you guys to know. Uh, if you've never played Gloomhaven before, anytime something dro dies, it drops a coin on the ground. You can only gain that coin by playing a card that has a loot action or by ending your turn on top of it. Uh, so you can't move through all three of them and pick them all up. You have to end your turn on it to pick it up. Um, there are actually a lot of situations where when you're playing you might not collect any gold because the game can be very fast paced and if you run out of cards and burn them all from your hand then your character is exhausted and is effectively dead from the scenario. So there might not be time to sit around and collect loot and as soon as you finish the mission the mission ends and you don't get to go back and collect anything. So it's a very nice like give and take mechanic. Yep. It's hard. Alright so I did burn my fire, up, my fire orbs card with that so that gets discarded. Uh, I also generated a fire. I did it. Thank you. Uh, let me see, what else did I do on my turn? I need to mark that I used three attacks off of this, and I gained one more XP. Because uh, when you're using yep, a card like Crackling the, Air, the it, right, these little starbursts show that you gain an XP for covering that up. And I believe, Goodness gracious, Spellweaver. Right. Uh, I believe that's everything that I need to do on my turn, so we can move on to the next turn now. Alright. Uh, and round. Uh, I am going to come down here and make a note on my character. Because I have done a thing that I need to keep secret. It's that you killed guards. Yeah. <laughs> or is it just killed characters? Something like that. It's probably just because care. I I could easily just search it, but <laughs> <laughs> that's not right. Um, okay, so I'm poisoned. I really shouldn't be the boy that opens the door until we heal me. So I can go super quick and give you a heal, but then I won't be able to move into the next room. Um, that's fine. Uh, I should probably. I'm gonna probably move a bunch. Mm -hmm. Um, and probably end on a coin or something. I don't know. Hold on. I do have a loot card though. Hey, loot's pretty good, especially right now. Or did I pass on the loot card? I usually pass on looting. I don't care that much. I did. Yeah, I, can, I don't. I can heal. It doesn't heal self. I don't have heal self cards. Uh, is it? Does it say specifically heal other? Because usually you just choose whoever you want to heal. Uh, it just says heal to range three. Yeah, so you that that includes yourself. You're in range three. Okay. Well, I'm always in range three. I think yeah, I can. I can't walk up yet. So, do you want to heal yourself and have me move into the next room and go invisible? That, if necessary. Oh, yeah, the next room you have to. I'm not cheating. Yeah. No, but, we totally have not played the scenario many times over. No, you totally have to go in and go invisible. Um, because then I can f come up behind you, and I think I can create. Yeah, let me just heal myself. Because my heal is really small. It's only heal two. Alright. Uh, so if we're going to do that, I've got my cards picked out. Don't forget to uh, you should, uh, get rid of your cards up here. Were they uh, just oh, both discarded? Yeah, I got it. Yeah, yeah I didn't cheat. No cheating. <laughs> um, I guess I'll go late in the round and like pick a ranged ability just in case... I'm going super quick in the round. So I'm going very quick. I'm going to move into the room, uh, hopefully throw off an attack, and then go invisible. 
Okay. I don't remember how far away the enemies are, so I may not even be in range for the attack. We'll just see. Well, if you're in the door, I think you're fine. Yeah. Okay, I'm ready. All right. So start round. And I am going to use my move. Yeah, my move four to yep. go one, two, three. So when you open up a door, you um, pause your movement, reveal the next room and everything inside of it. And then after everything's revealed, you still have the rest of your movement and turn. So click open. I love how it loads in. It's beautiful. That's so beautiful. All right. Oh, so, okay. This isn't bad. This isn't as bad when it's the four player. Yeah, when it's only two player, it's not bad. Four player has like 50 enemies. So I'm going yep. to use my last. Also, movement. you forgot to move your your thing first. Oh, that's true. Uh, so in that scenario, what does it do? It would go onto the coin. It goes under the coin. Dominions yeah. collect coins? I don't think so. No, they don't. Yeah, I didn't think so. All right, so I moved into the room. And now I'm going to use my attack. Uh, oh, wait, sorry. So something else happens when you reveal a room. Uh, you draw the initiative card for the enemies that have spawned. So everything in here is archers. So we now have archers that are moving on initiative 31. So they will move before Kevin does. And guards. Uh, is there a guard in this room? Yep. Oh, the, those already. are guards. I thought they were all archers. You're right. They move before me as well. Cool. Is it that dumb poison one? Okay, no. They they move less. Okay. Okay, cool. Alright, so I'm going to use my attack. Uh, and I'm going to use the fire that I generated last turn to give it plus one damage. So, consume fire. Uh, target one. Uh, base attack of two at range three. So I'm going to be targeting this bandit guard. Uh... It has plus one damage from me using up the fire element, and it has plus one damage from my crackling fire. So I'm dealing four damage base. And draw attack modifier. I got it! I missed! Oh, you got crit miss? Yeah. That sucks. Uh, I'm really sad. We forgot to also account for the bandit guard's elite shield that he has naturally. Uh, I did a lot of damage. He would have still died. I know he still would have died. You, he's no, he was super dead. Yeah. But I just, I just hate like missing little something. Little inconsistencies like that. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah. There's a crap ton of rules to remember in this game, so it's probably going to happen a lot. Okay. Uh, I, so, and now you're turning yourself invisible. Uh, I do gain one XP for my attack. That's discarded. Uh, I moved, so that's discarded. And then I am using my item, my invisibility cloak, to not get my butt handed to me in a second. So I am now okay. invisible, and it's Kevin's turn. So now, or the Archer's turn. I also do you think that this didn't move. You think that that didn't it, move because it didn't have a target? Yeah, because there's no, there's no targets. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Um. All right, so Archer. So now the Archer. What is the Archer doing? Kevin, read its card for me. Uh, the Archer is uh moving plus zero attack uh plus zero. So it is an elite. Its move is two. So there is no target in the. Does it have line of sight on me? Um. So as far as I'm aware, uh, if the it door does is have open, line of sight on me. it knows that you're there. So even if it didn't have line of sight, it would still be moving to move into that room. If that makes and sense. And line of sight works along the hex lines, doesn't it? Yeah. So. Yeah, so her hexes touch my hexes. So. Yeah. Basically, if. The corner of her hex can touch the corner of your hex, then she has line of sight. Yep. Alright, uh, so she moved two ahead, and uh -huh. she can't attack because you're out of range, so her turn's over. And then the guards move. These guards have a step of three. Alright, so... But they treat you like a barrier. They do. So they go around you. So this guy will move first, because he's number five. So he moves to here. Oh, God. So he's not in range. Cut off. Yet. And then this guy will move to here because he could move through his ally but he doesn't have enough movement to end up on the other side of him so he has to stop there oh gosh I don't like being cut off from yeah, you yeah this is a little dangerous um, all spoilers uh, I'm probably just going to uh, cry myself Jumping. to sleep next turn what <laughs> no you can. You have your 8 movement don't you I do your still 8 have movement, my eight movement jump? yeah yeah, okay, you're golden. Alright, so that's well, the guard. Or Yeah, because they can attack, so that's the guard, and now we're back to Kevin. Okay, so mine is 
going to be I heal myself too, which removes my poison, which doesn't even heal me, which stinks. And then at a range of three for attack of three, and I'm going to damage you. <laughs> Whoops. Damage uh, me, uh-oh. Yeah, so attack at all allies and enemies adjacent to the target suffer one damage. So in range of three is this guy. I attack for three. Uh, attack for two. Two damage to him. And then everybody around takes one damage. And then I take one. Ouch. Sorry. That's really bad. Alright, so... Uh, sorry, did you have anything else on your turn? Nope, that's it. We gotta remove the poison from me, though. Yeah, I tried to, but it wasn't letting me. So, I kinda... I think you need to move eight and heal me. <laughs> so if I well I can't heal you this turn. Um I could go ahead and short rest early and get uh, like a couple of cards back, but it doesn't really help. Um I can create an ops I can't create an obstacle on that coin. That coin's in the way. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna be choosing these cards because I have to. And I'm going to be going late in the round so I can maintain my invisibility. And You're going late in the round. Mm -hmm. You're going to maintain your invisibility. All adjacent allies suffer two damage. I can't do that to you. I have somehow... I don't know what's going on. I have to do this... And I have to do this. And it has to be... Yeah, it has to be this card first. And this card first. This is bad, dude. We might fail. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we're not that bad off, but we're definitely not in a great situation currently. Um, oh, he's elite, even. Yeah. Okay, so we all set to start round? Uh-huh. All right, so it's going to be Archer, Guard, you, and me. Oh, man, I'm not even fast enough. <laughs> wait. Right. Did... Wait. What's no, it? no, no. Oh, no. What? I meant to pick my 13 one. Oh, you grabbed the wrong one? Yeah. Okay. Please excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I put it in the wrong order. I'm sorry. I wasn't right, trying so... to cheat. 13 is first. me first. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I am going to... Um, on the next six melee attacks targeting you, gain Retaliate 2. Nice. Very nice. Okay, so that goes here. Also, as a quick heads up, which you just pointed out this guy's elite, that means that he's got a shield, right? Yeah. So he didn't take that damage from earlier. No, I thought he was normal. And now um, I'm just going to... I can't hurt you though. Oh, this is so bad. Can you take two more damage? I'm at four health. Oh Lord have mercy. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm not gonna be crying if I take two more damage because theoretically, I don't want to take any more. Because um, I get to, but... I get to target both these guys for three damage. Yeah. And I gain experience. I gained two experiences, actually. Yeah, I mean, like this guy could be this guy could be dead. Mm -hmm. This guy is gonna die at this round. Yeah, mess him up. Okay, here we go. So I'm attacking the non-elite for three damage. Uh, three damage. So one, two, three. I'm consuming the earth, and now the elite. For three damage, minus one for the shields, and then yeah, you take two. two damage. Then I take two damage. I'm so sorry. This is bad positioning. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So I'll go ahead and mark you as moved because uh, you uh, grabbed the wrong card, so you were above them. So tell me yep. what the archer's doing. The archer has a move of. 
1, attack minus 1, and creates a 3 damage trap in an adjacent empty hex closest to the enemy. Alright, so it moved of 1. Uh, what's its range? Its range is 5. 4, 5, so you're still out of range, so it just creates a trap. Closest to the enemy, so right there. You can't copy paste. I can. It was just locked. Okay. Now I can relock it. All right. Uh, now the guards, right? Yep. Uh, guards are have a move plus two plus one, but an attack minus one. Sorry. Right, so on a the move, elite is gonna move three. One, two. And then he's the gonna, huh? Oh yeah, okay, and now he attacks me for two base. So, two and draw. So, so two damage, two. and then he takes two retaliate. I think that goes through shields. Retaliate, I don't believe, goes through shields. So just one? Yeah, feel free to double check me on that, though. Alright, uh, so I took two damage. Six, seven, eight, nine, yep. Okay. Oof, we and heard And now, him. the other guy is moving... And he is moving for two steps, or for three steps, for four steps, actually. He only needs the one. And he is attacking for one base. One damage. And takes a retaliate of two. And he's dead. And a coin drops on the door. <laughs> I got it. Yeah, I got it. Oh, no, he okay. was here. Oh. It stacks? As far as I'm aware, yeah. Okay. That's how I've been playing it in real life. I've just assumed that it would stack since that's where he died. Uh, oh, God. All right. We're so ouchies. Yeah, we're pretty badly hurt. All right, so now it's up to me. Um, yep. So I probably do need to move at least into this room uh, to get away from the archer so she doesn't attack me next turn. Uh, we don't have any elements generated. Your 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 guy will attack the elite. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Thank you. Uh, so it does a base attack of three. And this is the button. So two damage, so one damage. That Ugh. sucks. Um, yeah, you're going to have to jump way back. I can't, like, well, I guess that I just have to burn it. Because if I stay where I am, I'm probably dead next turn. So... I'm going to burn my 8 movement and go 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm at least safish there because you're ahead of me. Uh, so I'll move to there for 4, generate wind. And... Then I will attack for a base attack of four with my uh, crackling air. Yep, wait. And also, you get to take the wind out of the room, too, for five. I just generated it, so I can't use it. Oh. So I got a minus one, so one, two, three. All right, he'll be dead. All right, so this gets discarded. This one gets burnt. And I need to... Probably need to short rest here. So when you short rest, uh, you've got two options whenever you need to get cards back from your discard. You can either short rest, which discards a random card and allows you to take your turn like normal, or you can long rest, which lets you choose which discarded card to burn, and you heal, and refresh any spent items. So it wouldn't be bad to use right now. Uh, I don't get my spent items back because they're both burn items. But I would heal two health, which I need. However, I think that I want to short rest so that I can go ahead and get my cards back and use a heal and or some type of attack this turn. If you long rest, your guy still does things. Uh, no, you go to initiative 99 and that's just your turn, I think. But this still gets to do something at 99. Oh, my, uh, my little token does, yeah. Yeah. Um... Okay, so yeah, I'm going to short rest and discard a random card. And also, when you're discarding a random card, you can choose to take a damage and choose a different card instead. 
Uh, so I would take a damage, reshuffle this, and then pick a different card without putting this back in the pile so that I can't draw it again. However, I don't have the health to do that, and I also don't necessarily miss this card, so that card gets burnt. And these come back into my hand. I don't know what I should do, dude. Alright, well, I, I am mean... going to be going super quick with a heal. To heal me or to heal you? Uh, you. Okay, that helps. I'm not poisoned anymore, even though we couldn't get rid of it. I guess... And then my movement doesn't really matter because I don't really need to move. Oof. So I'm good to go. I oh, think... Also, we didn't end the round. We gotta yeah. remember that. So again, guys, uh, we've played a lot of Gloomhaven in real life, but TTS is very different from real life. And I'm sure there's a lot of small things that we might be missing that we're getting accustomed to. Just stick with us, and we'll get a lot better as the videos go on. I think I'm just gonna basic. I think we're just gonna be a basic bitch and move to. <laughs> One thing that I did miss last round that I just realized was, one, I would gain an extra XP from my Crackling Air, and two, I also used Crackling Air's last charge, so it gets burnt. That's OP, dude. Alright, you ready to go? I'm sadly ready to go, yes. Alright, so it's going to be me, the Archer, you, and the Guard. So you can definitely kill the Guard before he attacks you. Um, I am going to go ahead and give... You, oh, it's a range one. Wait, this goes first. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Thank you. So it does a base attack of three. So minus Two. one, minus one, so one damage. Got it. And I am going to move two to right behind you so that I can heal you. And heal Kay. you for three. Yay! Okay. Okay. That's my turn. Okay, then the archer. The archer is moving moving two steps. Has a range of four and is attacking for four. Jeez. Well, the good news is one, two, three, four. One, she's not in range, and two, even if she was, she wouldn't be able to see you to attack. Okay. All right, uh, so now you're up. Now, I am just going to, very basically, attack for two. Two damage is one damage through the shields. And then I'm going to move one, two. <laughs> I'm getting coins, boy. All right, so you just end there and pick up those two coins? Yep. And we'll just delete them, and I'll make the gold, gold notes on my card. <laughs> and then the guard's dead, so we don't need to worry about that. Okay. Alright, we, we move on to our next round. I must rest. I am going to long rest this turn. I have to short rest. Or actually, maybe it'd be better to long rest too, and just let the guard poke at me. Mm. Or should I short rest and try to punch her in the gut? Um, I have if a... I could... go ahead. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say that I've kind of burnt through some cards really quickly, so if we can move quicker, it's probably okay. A better option. Um, I'm gonna short rest. This uh, is my discard side, right? Yeah. Also worth noting that when you long rest, um, your initiative becomes 99, and you don't heal until you move. So, if I have two health, and something moves before me and hits me for two damage, I die. Or, excuse me, exhaust. We don't die in this game. Ah, uh, my loot card is gone. Rest in peace. Ripperoni and pizza. You can just draw them into your hand. I forget. Five. Yeah. There you go. That's how I do it. Okay. And... So, my short rest is done. I need to step one, two, three, at least. Man, okay. These traps are going to be brutal to get to the next... Well, I can jump. I don't know if you can. I can jump, too. Cool, so we can just jump over them. Um, yeah, yeah, we can just jump over them. 
Oh, also, I did it again. We need to end the round. Move to an all-adjacent island. Nope, don't want to do that. Um. Oh, also, I am not invisible. I think I'm going to move four, get up into her into her gillet, and, um, oh wait, these should be in my hand, because I didn't have these in my pile. Oops. Alright, so if I click long rest, that lets you know that I'm doing that, and then start round. Oh cool, I go before her. Okay, okay. so my first thing is I'm going to move five with jump. One, two, three, four, five. She's immobilized. Hold on, where were you at? I was here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, cool. I thought Kay. you were one space down. She's immobilized. I gain experience. Okay. Very nice. Um, and then I attack three, target all adjacent enemies, and I get another experience. And it is a base of three. Three damage. Does she have a shield? Three. No. no archers don't have shields. All right, so that's good. Uh, so that means that if she, when she attacks me, she will be muddled. Yep, yep. So what is she doing on her turn? On her turn, she has an attack plus one and a range plus one. Okay, so... Uh, so her range now becomes, uh oh, that might be bad. Six. Well, I mean, uh, I think Would she, she still you? has to target the closest enemy. Maybe. Ooh, that's actually a good question. Or, or would she attack to be attack you to be not muddled? Uh, unsure. Uh, da -da -da. this is important. Because, like, they're smart, aren't they? Well, here's the thing. I don't think that she can hit me anyways. Because, yeah, to get to mine, uh, to get to me, the, she'd have she to go through to the wall. Yeah, okay. So, we'll just say that, and I just want to check that. Yeah, that'll be a rule we check in between rounds, or in between 29. Games. Yeah, I'm just opening up to the page in the rulebook right now. All right, while you're doing that, I'll go ahead and do her attack on you. She's going to draw two modifier cards and take the worst, because you're right next to her. So she takes so, a plus zero. zero. And so that means she's hitting me for four damage. For four? Oof. Down to one. Oh my gosh. That's really bad, bro. All right. Uh, so now it's up to me. Uh, my guy goes first, so he's going to go one and two. Uh, what is his range? His range is 2, so whether or not he has line of sight, he's not in range, so it doesn't matter. Uh, so then it moves to me. I don't play anything, I just healed for 2. Which is up here. Boop, boop. And it is the end of the round. I can heal for 6 next round. It's probably important. Um, oh my god, she can't go fast at all or I die. Or she needs to get a crit miss on her muddle. So her immobilize is gone, by the way. Mm, that's the end of her next turn. Uh, well, she would have moved that turn, so it removes it. Mm, I'm a, I'm a contest that. Immobilize page twenty-two. When a figure is immobilized, it cannot perform any move abilities. At the end of its next turn, the immobilized token is removed. Oh, neat. I thought it was just whenever it moves, it gets removed. Nope. And there you go. Um. Oh, man, I'm so worried. I mean, I would say that I could go quick and just make her target me, but I can't do either of those things. So I can go fairly quick. But she just can't go faster than me. That's pretty much what it boils down to. Um, so I I'm ready to use that this turn for that. So this goes here, and this goes here, and I am ready. Start the round. Uh, and you're going first. On first. Oh, sweet baby Jesus. All right. Uh, heal Jesus. myself four. Imbue the room with earth. And heal myself two. So five total. 
That was really important. <laughs> Wouldn't it be six total? You healed uh, four and two. Oh yeah. Bam. Thank you. So now you're up to seven. Not bad. Uh, what is the archer doing? The archer is not moving, but targeting to attack minus one. Her right, range so is five. Attack minus one. Plus two. Wait, wait, in the range of five, she can target two things. Yeah, but so I'm not in line of first. sight. Uh, but she can attack... Oh, that's true. This is a thing, isn't it? So she should have attacked that last round. But I, I forgot that it was even there. No, she couldn't attack it last round because it was here. On 99, it moved. Oh, there you go. Okay, well, either way, so she's going to be attacking there. Uh, she's attacking here first. And yep. she got a plus one. Or... Yep, so she attacks for... Minus one to her base. So she attacks for one damage on your guy. One damage. So there's one health left. Uh, I don't know if there's an easy way to track that. I can probably um, do it. You take a damage token over here, and you just put it on like your... Yep. Yep. All right. And then she's going to attack you, and she's muddled. Yep. All those plus ones. Uh... Four, three damage. Well, I'm glad I healed. Yep. How did she only do a one damage to my guy and three to you? Because she had minus... Did I read it wrong? So her attack she is three. Three, minus, minus one. Minus one, plus one, so she should have done three to my thing. Oh, your guy's dead. Yeah. Sorry. That's I think I might have read the non-elite. Oh, good. That's actually perfect. I needed my card to be... Uh... Oh, so you can summon a new one. That's right. Oh my god. Okay, and it is now your turn. Alright, so on my turn, uh, I am... <laughs> I'm kind of scared to move into the room because uh, she's targeting multiple things right now. But uh, I guess it needs to happen, right? So we're going one, two... Do I just want to, like, stop here and get this coin? No. Three. Oh. Uh, yeah, we did. I was about to say we didn't generate coins for the guards, but they were in this room when they died. So I move three. May as well move up to here. It doesn't make a big difference whether or not I do. Uh, so that's my four movement. Discard that. And then I will use Reviving Ether, which lets me recover all of my burnt cards. And then it burns itself. Yay. And that's our turns. Yeah. This stinks, bro. <laughs> you are taking a decent amount of damage, yeah. And I could go open the other door. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you hit end round? I did not, thank you. I did it. Okay, so let's oh, see. No, no, no. This should be here. Oh, well, it should be here. This should be waning now. Yeah. Yep. Alright, so what do I want to do? Do I want to summon my guy? Attack for plus... I'm, yeah, I gotta do that. Uh, do you think you're going to kill her this turn? Yes. Alright, so... What, is my, what are my movement options? I don't want to use my big movement until we get ready to move into the next room. At the end of the, very late in the round, in the back quarter, last quarter, I could probably kill her off, and then move, uh, move to open the door without popping the traps. And be safe afterwards? Question mark? Not be safe, no. Yeah. So, because you'd be moving very late in the round, the chances are you'd open that door... And, then everybody and if you can't me. move back, they would all attack you and you'd die. Um, it's a big move, though. It's a big jump move. Okay. Well, if you have enough to, like, uh, move to the door, open it, and then move to safety back in this room... Oh, no, I don't. Then... It'd have to be next round. Yeah. So, if you think you're killing her this round, I can use this turn to set up again, and then next turn we can move into that room. That yeah, sound good? Kill her. All right. So, in that case... 
I am going to oh, but, uh actually I mine's late in the rounds I she could possibly kill me uh I mean I, I guess that's true I can secure the kill I could secure the kill that's two damage uh we have an element uh I can hit her pretty hard quickly so yeah thinking about it with you going late I think I'm gonna go quick and take the kill okay so yeah cause all my quick cards are used up uh... and then I'm just gonna try actually I think I'm gonna go ahead and use my summon too um so I'll be moving quick hopefully to kill her and then summoning my guy and getting ready for the next turn. Next turn. Um, I feel like there's something that I'm forgetting that I wanted to do. I don't remember what it was. Oh, shoot. I could move in and make... That's going to be my next round. Sounds like fun. So, boop, boop. I'm going to move in and make barriers so they can't get in. Oh, are you moving into the next room? I Not not until next round, but I can move into the next room and okay. drop barriers. So, real quick, what's your plan for this round? Uh, kill her. Uh, just basic bitch it. So, you could long rest and get a couple health points back. I will do that in between. Okay. Uh, hold on, hold on. Let me tell you what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move two. Yep. I and that's gonna get me so I can do some funny shit next round. Maybe. Gotcha. Um, I will be moving closer to the door and attacking her if I need to, or attacking her and then moving closer to the door. All right, works for me. Depending I'm on how much damage you do. Good to go. I'm good to go. All right, I'm moving on seven. Uh, just for our knowledge, what is the archer doing on her turn? She's moving at plus zero, attacking at minus one, and range plus one. And she immobilizes us. Cool. So she's so going to she die before that. Die. Uh, I am going to use up our earth and get so attack a for three attack for four three. damage or three damage. You're right. Yeah, because it's not crackling. So four damage hey. kills her. <sighs> okay. Generate a coin. Yay. And then, then you make a little bubby. I want to make my little bubby. And we he's need to name your ally. Right here. Uh, yeah. Let's come up with a fun name for him. Uh, well, what do you picture your ally as? Your mystic ally. Uh, like a little will o' wisp, like floating light ball. That just, like, shocks people, tases them to death. Okay. <laughs> uh, so right, she's uh, dead, so I'm gonna just move to... I gained an XP for my card, by the way, and they're both... Well, that's discarded, and this is active. Yep. I move to. You move to? Yep. And is that all you're doing? That's all I can do. End of round. I also need to make a note. Who killed those, uh... Warriors, by the way, for no particular uh, reason. Oh, I do not remember. You're gonna have to look at when you when you edit. Okay, so depending on my battle goal, it may or may not be close to being finished, depending on who killed them. I think <laughs> one killed himself with retaliate. Yeah, one, one died to retaliate. Yep. Yeah. And I think I might have. I think I finished off the elite with a. I think that you also finished them off, but I'm not certain. Well, either way, like you said, I can check in editing because this is recorded. All right, so new round. Yep. <sighs> Not happy about this. Uh, are you generating any elements this turn? Um, if I create some obstacles, I could for you, but it would be very late. Uh, I will also be going very late. 
but um, I actually can't move and create those obstacles. I think I have to short rest right now. You think you have to short rest right now? Yeah. Okay. Well, before I make my final decision on my cards, let me know if you're generating any element whatsoever. Well, I'm short resting, so... Well, you can short rest and still do a thing on your turn. Or are you long resting? I'm short resting right now. Okay. What am I losing? Ooh, I'm losing a heal card. I, But I can't hurt myself to get a heal back. Yeah, especially a heal two. Yeah. I'm getting the heal four back, so... Alright, so I can move five and immobilize all the targets that I go through. And that's a really good... And it's with jump. That's a really good go. way to that's open the door, do you think? Uh, yeah. And then I could heal four after I do it. <laughs> and there you go. And then you'll be max or close to max? I'll be really close to max. Eight out of ten, yeah. Uh... I hate that these tokens, for whatever reason, can't be removed. I'm going really early. You should probably go mid-range. Uh, I'm going really late. Okay, that's perfect then. Alright, ready to go? Ready to go! Okay, so... Uh, I move five. Uh, first I'll heal four. Let me do that. Okay. And then... One, two, opens the door. Boom. I should probably get out of the way, shouldn't I? Okay, opens the door. Kicking through the door, you find yourself face to face with the reason these bandits chose this particular hole to nest in. Animate bones. Unholy abominations of necromantic power. Nothing more to do but lay them to rest along with the remainder of this troublesome rabble. And I still have three moves. One, two, three, immobilizes. And but you can't land on him. Oh, no, I can't. So, should I bait them out? or? Sh uh, don't forget you got your boots of striding, so you could get two more move if you wanted. Also, we do immediately draw their cards, so we get to see what they're doing. Right, let's do that. So, draw, I'll draw the bones. archer cards. The archers are not moving, but they're targeting two. None of them are elite. They're attacking for one damage. The Living Bones, what is their movement? Their base movement is three or four. They're moving at minus one and then attacking at plus one. Uh, it's probably not... I can probably immobilize this turn. one of them. Uh, it's not worth it getting in there because you're going to be smacked around a lot. This turn, just like get out of the room if you can. I still have... I still move two, so I still have three moves. So, yeah. one, two. And I have another jump, so... Uh, one, two. Can you end up here? Because then you're out of line of sight for everyone. Yes, I can. Okay. Alright, that was your turn. Yeah. So now the archers, what were they doing again? They are not moving. They're attacking minus one, targeting two. So, they're so no attack. attacks. And yeah. the living bones are moving how fast? Living bones are moving at a breakneck pace of one two steps so one and two here's the other fun part uh if we can bait them into this room they have to step on the traps or at least one of them has to step on a trap uh and then this guy moves one and two yep and they don't have anything in range to attack so they're done and let me see what was i doing oh yeah i had chose my ride the wind because i was thinking about just jumping I straight i totally in landed here because we would have read that they didn't attack uh, well, what's the range on the archers? The range of the archers is really small. Really small? It's like, uh, it's four. It's, I'm way more than four. Then yeah, you'd, you'd be fine. Yeah. Alright, um, four so how far away? I'm super far away. Well, first off, the, my guy moves. He's going to move up two, and then he's not in range, so he just kind of sits there. Uh, then it's going to be me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight... Uh, I'm not going to use my movement to burn. Uh, nobody's in range currently. I have a range 3 attack. So, 1, 2, 3. To be able to attack, I would have to land on a trap, which I don't want to do. So I Am I in your way? I totally could have landed here. Uh, no, you're not in my way. 
you can stay there, you're fine. I think that all that I really can do this turn is move, unfortunately just move the base 2 and pick up this coin. I do have earth in the room. Uh, yeah, and then, like I said, I'm not in range for anything, so there's both of these are discarded. Alright. Okay. So, coin is picked up, and we move on to the next round. You moved your dude? I did. Yeah, you did. We have to do something to these traps. These traps are really... Or we just need to, like, get in there. Well, the, uh... If we're moving slow, these guys are going to move in and get hit by at least one of the traps. Remember. That's true. <sighs> and... It's like, the trap is there... Is, they go through it? So, here's how it works, depending on their movement. Uh, one of them will have to land on the trap to attack you, because there's no path around them. Uh, right. If the other one... Say, for instance, if they have a total movement of three this turn, they would go one, two, and three. And the, so one right. would hit a trap and one wouldn't. However, if they only have okay. a movement of two, they would land here and here. Okay. And their base stepping is three, I think. Yeah, their base stepping is three. So it's potential they could both move in to attack you and only one hit a trap. But they also generally get a lot of minuses, I think, on their cards. All right, so I have to choose these two cards. Question is, what order do I want them in? Uh, I'm probably going to be attacking this round, and I want to go a little slow. So let's do what it. happened? Can I push people into obstacles? Push. You can, yes. And does that hurt them? Yes. If you so even better, uh, if you push somebody through multiple obstacles, they get hit by both of them. Push. The only thing to note about that is that pushing has to always end up further away from you. So, like, you couldn't push them sideways, if that makes sense. They yeah, always have to come it has to be away from, uh, away from me. It yeah. doesn't say... Okay, so what's where's obstacles? I just need if to you know push, how much... I am 100% certain if you push an enemy through a trap, they take damage. Oh, yes, I know. But I'm thinking, like, can I push them into this freaking wall? Oh, into the... No, into the that table. didn't do anything. Yeah. Okay. Dang it. All that obstacles do are, are they're basically impassable terrain that you can shoot attacks through. Yeah. Like, over. Oh, uh, also, we've got a new thing in this room. Uh, when it generated, it gave us a little treasure chest over here. Uh, and it is telling us that if we manage to get to that treasure chest, we unlock tr whatever treasure number seven is. Yeah. Um, and I know what treasure number seven is because I have the book. I also know what treasure number seven is because we played this game before. I may want it. Uh, but also worth noting, like I said earlier, if we kill all the enemies before we pick it up, we just lose it. Because the round or the game ends immediately. All so. adjacent allies and enemies suffer one damage. But if two damage instead if there's air in the room. And it's a plus four. And it gets me in there. And I have retaliate. And I do, I do almost half their damage. Can you heal me before I go in? Uh, I don't have any heal cards available to me this turn. Okay. Um, so what am I, I doing for? I think that we should let them come to us and hit at least one of these traps. Well, let me go late, then. Uh, okay, go on late. Can you check your book real quick and see how much damage these traps do? I think it's two. It's it's two times uh, it's two times the level. Start round. Bones move first. That's nice. So what are they doing? They here? are. Please tell me they're moving two. Not moving. They are shielding one. Sucks. And healing two. All right, well, they're shielded, and they don't have any health to heal. That kind of sucks. What are the archers doing? Now, does the shield stack the shield one onto their shield one? Yes. If they have a shield one already, then they have shield two. Okay. All right. Then the orchid spell weaver. Am I in your way? Did I totally spawn here? Hmm? Did I drop here? Oh, uh, what are the archers doing? Uh, archers. Hold on, I fell down. And yeah, let's, let's figure out where you, where you should have ended your turn. Um, um, 
So the orchid, orchard, spell weaver. So here's, no, the archers uh, are. Here's the really shitty thing. Uh, one, two. Mm. They're only moving one. They're only moving one. So yeah. This guy moves here, here, and then this guy moves here. Um. All right. And so their range is four. Four, one, two, three, four. Not in range. So my I little totally ended here. My little guy's gonna go first and kill himself, basically. He has to move two. Uh, well. So because he treats them as obstacles as well. So the way that movement works. Yeah, to be in range. Is yeah, that you to have to move to be in range. So yeah. if these guys were one more back then he wouldn't move because he couldn't move to be in range. Yeah. But, so yeah. So he's gonna... Which one of these traps would you like him to hit? Uh, the one farther away from me. One, This one? Yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, so the trap okay. goes off every minute. Sorry, I was just thinking through... Uh, thinking through the rest of my turn now. So that sucks. My little guy did literally nothing. Because the freaking guys. Well, you got an experience for it. I guess. I hope I did. You, Actually, you I don't think one. I did. You have ten experience, bro. I got ten experience in one. Yeah, that's pretty average for the spell weaver. All right. All right. So what do I want to do now? Um. Moving one two. And then I'm going to fire orbs and gain two experience. Uh, targeting... Uh, you know what? Yeah, Three? let's go ahead and use my power potion this turn. So. Yep, because they have shields. Uh, attack of four base, targeting three first. Yep. Oh, I messed up. My bad. Draw attack modifier. So, three minus two for one damage. Oof. Ugh. And then a miss. Oh my god. Uh, that was literally the worst that thing that could have happened. Alright, so this gets burned. And, and now it's my turn. This gets discarded, and now it's your turn. And we're well, just gonna that's, that's ouchy. Yeah, yeah. Um so I'm going to move four with jump. Uh so one, two, three, four. All adjacent things to me uh, take two damage instead, and I gain two experience. So they take two damage and block two damage because of the shields? Yeah, which is frustrating. And now, I attack in a really weird formation. Uh, hold on, I use the boots. Hold on, I use my boots for two more mm -hmm. steps. Which actually is going to put me here. Which means that they would take some damage, right? Yes. So they each take two damage? Take two damage, yep. There we go. And now I have a weird attack formation. Yep. So I attack with a blank and then two next to each other. Uh, no. So the blank is where your attack is coming from. Really? Uh, I believe so. Okay. Or no, that makes sense. Is... No, that makes sense. Yeah. So I attack these two guys for four base damage. Okay. Uh, so, um... Okay, kill one. Times two. Uh, that kills them both. Really? So when you oh, do an it's... AoE attack, you only flip one card. Oh, shoot. Because it's not target. Okay, well, I yeah. killed both those guys. Good job. So now I can go get the treasure chest That's... next, next well, round. Yeah. All right, that's actually really good news because now these guys are melee fighters and we can basically kite them yep. to oblivion. Um, <laughs> I have no cards left in hand, right? So that I was huge. <laughs> that saved the whole thing. Really did, yep. That that times two, good timing. Um, end round. Let's get rid of this mess up that I had. 
Um, do I want a short rest or long rest? What's my health for? Do you think I can afford to long rest here? Hmm. I feel like I just wrong, long rest. Um, that's fine. I mean, I have retaliate for two on. I have eight health. So I'm not going to need this card, my big movement, because you're picking the uh, chest up this turn, right? Yep, I have to. So that means all of these guys come into my hand. And That's this two. Round. And you ready to go? Alright, let's do it! Alright, so the Living Bones are up first. What do they do, Kevin? The Living Bones are going to... Move minus two, which means they only move one, and heal self two. So this guy is going to move first and move into you. Yep. And then this guy his can't move. His attack is. His attack is at one. His attack is at one. Yep. So one damage. And he reta I retaliate for two. So one because of his shield, right? Yep. And then he heals. Because it's heals. move, okay. attack, heal. And then this guy can't reach you. So, if at the start of their movement they can't reach somebody, do they pick a different target, or how does that work? Do you remember? Uh, they. I feel like they move if able. I really, really think they do. So he would target me and move one to eventually get within range. So yeah, you're its focus, and it just can't move to you, so it just sits there. I mean, it can it can effectively move one. Its movement it has to get closer to you, and that doesn't get its close get it closer. Okay. All right, so that answers that, and then it's your turn. I already, I already did it. Oh wait, no, this is next round. Mm -hmm. Uh oh, yeah, you're long resting. Um, so I'm moving four, I think. Where am I gonna attack first? Uh, you. Do -do -do -do. They have a shield of one. There is no earth in the room. And I'm going to muddle all of them. Should be good. Okay, so... One, two, three, four. Moves me here. Range of two. Moves me one, two. And then a circle around that. No, so I have to attack first. I attack within a range of two. My target is the hex here. Okay. I am doing um, one damage to all of them and muddling all of them. So nice. draw attack modifier. So it's one damage. They block it, but they get muddled. Nice. Muddle, muddle, muddle. And now I move four. One, two, three, four. Got the chest. Oh, I fell down. <laughs> Got the chest. Quick. Cool. All right, so that was your turn. Yep, and then I have to and short then rest. My turn is I've already done my card part, and I heal two. Boop boop. I only have, dude. I only have two more rounds. Uh, I have three more rounds. Now you've got you've got more than that. All of these are in your discard, right? Yeah, four cards. Four. Plus one okay, of my short hands. rest now. Yeah, so you've got. Yeah, we both got two more rounds. Or both got three more rounds. Yep. Yep. All right. So with that in mind. Okay, I lost an okay card. I wish they didn't have a shield. That's so freaking frustrating. Yeah, the shield is pretty harsh. Uh, so I'm going to be moving pretty quickly. And I'm going to be doing some decent damage to both of them. We'll see what happens. Two, three, four... How, how, are you moving, like, super fast? Uh, first quarter. 
Uh, would it help if I imbue the room? Um, I'm not no. looking at what you're doing. No? They're muddled. So I should totally get up in their business. Uh, so I should move three and... Yeah. Alright, cool. So we've gotten the treasure in this room, and I think that we're both in a pretty good position to just take these guys out in three turns, so... Shouldn't be too bad. Alright, here we go. I think you're gonna have three turns, I'm gonna have two turns, because I'm gonna be burning my cards to try and kill these guys, so... Here we go. Let's do it. Alright, so... Oh, I meant to put my third... I put them in the wrong order. I'm 13. I'm sorry. Okay. I didn't look at anything that they did. I'm 13. So I go first. All right. So what you doing, buddy? I'm moving three and attacking three. One, two, One, three. two three, and then attacking for three. Uh, so four, four damage minus one for three. Okay, then it's uh, your turn. So that was you, and yep. now it's me. Uh, I am going to stay where I am and use Impaling Eruption. Uh, I generate an Earth Element. Uh, oh, that's the one where they're in line of each other. Yep. Uh, so yep. range four, one, two, three, four. Hits them both. Uh, target all enemies in the path to the primary target and gain plus one for each enemy targeted XP. So I gain two more XP. Yep. Uh, it is a base attack of three, and I don't have anything to boost it, I don't think, so we just go ahead and draw. I'm going to be drawing for number three first. Uh, draw attack modifier. So he takes two damage, and then base attack of three on number one. Oh, really? Uh, so he blocks it. Yep. Hopefully my retaliate will help. Okay, because you ready for this? That sucks. What do they do? So, um, they move plus zero, so that means that they're moving two. Wait, no. They're moving three. Yeah, they move three. And then they target all allies, or all... one enemy with all attacks. Because they target two. Alright, so, well, first things first, they move of three, this guy gets to move here. Yep. Uh, number one's gonna hit you first. Uh, yep. He hits you twice. He hits me twice. So the first one gets uh, a for one damage plus zero. Okay, so I take one damage and then he retaliates two. I retaliate two. And then so he takes one. Yep. Then he attacks you again for, for one, damage. one damage. And then I retaliate two. And then number okay. three is going to attack you. Yep. For. Zero, Zero damage, damage, and I retaliate too. Yep. And then he's gonna. Attack oh wait, you. I think I'm out. Wait, hold on, hold on. How many retaliates did I do? Two retaliates. That's my last retaliate. Okay, so he only took one of the two retaliates. Yep. yep. All right. So he's at one health. Yep. That sucks for me. Uh, let me see. Can we kill him? Four. Can we kill him? Um. I get two experience. Oof. Oh, also, I didn't move at the end of that, but that's fine. You totally moved. No, because that would have changed what the enemies did. Oh. Uh, I am going to be going super fast, and I need this kill, Kevin. I accidentally deleted one of my cards. Oh, Kevin. <laughs> I don't know what the card was. Alright. I swear to God, if I get screwed over by, like, card draw, I'm going to be so sad. I can hit. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. Not active. I'm not ready. Perfect. You're not ready? Uh, let me make sure I put this in the right order. Now, also, end round. Okay, I'm ready. And start round. 
They're no longer right. muddled. Oh, we didn't even uh, muddle them. Yeah, rest in peace. It's oh, well. okay. So, uh, I'm going to be using Frost Armor to move two, one, two, which puts me into range three. And I am going to uh, use Earth, consume Earth, to get a base attack of three and plus one experience. He should be dead. Just fucking pray. And where's my button? Boom. Four damage kills him. Yay! Yay! Ba -ba -da -da. Ba -da -da -da. Look at that. It immediately ends. Like, I don't get to move? Yep, it immediately ends. Uh, Alright, I, I just want to see. I attack for two and. Double check that, I actually. See if I kill him. Yeah, I'm relatively certain that it ends, but. I wouldn't that. have killed him, by the way. You had to kill him there. Nice. So, whether or not you going, or you would go, only determines whether or not you pick up one more coin. Uh, so we can kind of check after this whole thing's done. So, finishing a scenario, page 33. We can check now. Um. The scenario can end. The remainder of the round is played out. And then the scenario ends. There you go. That's good to know. So you do pick up one more coin probably on your turn. I did this one. There you go. <laughs> With the last bandit dead, you take a moment to catch your breath and steel yourself against the visions of living remains ripping at your flesh. Your target is not among the dead, and you shudder to think what horrors still await you in the catacombs below. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. Party achievement. First steps. That goes on the map. It does. So oh, you I got come it over already. here. And click on this button right here, and the sticker comes out. Also, we can click on this to mark it as done. And yep. congratulations, we beat the first scenario on our first try, which is pretty good considering that it's an incredibly hard starting scenario. Uh, I kind of feel like I accidentally cheated and didn't lose cards when I was supposed to. Well, <laughs> we'll be able to tell when we go back and look. Actually, probably not. We'll see. I'm sure... For anybody watching, I'm sure that there's a lot of things that we may have messed up this round. Uh, I am talk, uh, chalking it up to TTS and having to kind of work the UI while we're playing. Again, it'll be something that we get better at as we go. Uh, there is still one thing left undone before we leave for the night, Kevin. What's that? Come and open up this treasure chest. Oh, state. Seven. Flip it. I did. It's in state two. I can just go get the card in real life if you want. Well, I mean, I know what the card is. Oh, it's, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's yeah. quest seven. It's, uh, so that unlocks the location random seven. location right here. Not location seven, just random location. So that'll be this one right over here, Kevin. Where am I? Oh. So shuffle that. I don't get to search for number seven? There is no number seven. The chest is number seven. Oops. I cheated. <laughs> oh. Oh, God. Everything's going wrong. Sixty-five. That's the one I unlocked in my real life game. Nice. What is the I matter? Sixty-nine in mine. The quest. Right, so. in my real life game. My I pulled the secret like super duper personal quest of secrecy. Where is sixty-five? That I have in real life. Kevin, you know where sixty-five is. Where is it's it? It's in the mountains. Sixty-two. Sixty-five. Got it. Bam. The sulfur mine. Cool. Can't wait to do so, that. Uh, the next video will be us continuing this area. Uh, technically, we unlocked the next step down as we descend further into the dungeon. And yep. uh, then, well, technically we have a choice. We could choose to go back to Gloomhaven, uh, spend any gold that we have, um, 
and buy items, uh, do things like that, get more road cards and uh, town cards. Or because this particular scenario is linked directly to the next scenario, we can just go straight to it without doing anything extra. Which that'll probably be what we do, but we'll see. Uh, otherwise, yep. you got anything that you want to say before we end the recording? Uh, thanks for joining us on this journey. It's going to be the beginning of the beginning. Yeah, the beginning of a long and probably horror-filled road. Well, horror. I mean, we did really good, honestly. I, I, We didn't exhaust. We got close. We had a, an awesome times two modifier that basically sealed the deal for us, because if I didn't get that, that was probably game over. Yeah, that times two modifier saved our butts. Um, we didn't cheat. On purpose. On purpose. There might have been an <laughs> accidental, like, shield not keeping account of, and I might have not lost a card when I should have. Also, there is one last thing that we should talk about before we end. Uh, our battle goals. This is when we reveal them. Uh, oh! So mine was... Oh, that's what I deleted. I deleted my battle goal by accident. So what was your battle which goal? Which was... Uh, take short rest only. Uh, did you do that? Yeah, I didn't long rest at all. Nice. Well, there you go. Yeah, because you're like, take a long rest, Kevin. And I was like, mm. <laughs> I was or like, I can heal myself yeah, for like a so. million. So mine was sadist, yeah. where I had to kill five or more monsters during the scenario. And I killed four right up until the very last attack where I killed that skeleton, which got me my fifth. Oh, hey. So look at that. So I get to come down here and click on my sheet that I have a single check mark. And I'm going to click on my sheet that I have a single check mark. I also gained a total of 15 XP. Um, and for completing the scenario, we get 6 XP extra each. So I gained... Wait, who says? The book. Oh my god. Yeah, when you complete a level 1 scenario, you get 6 XP. Okay, so I'm getting 19 experience. I'm getting 21. Wow. I kept on pace with the Spellweaver? You, yeah, you did really good. Assuming you didn't cheat. <laughs> um, I think... I think I know where I cheated. Um, I feel like I used my the move that I times twoed hmm. twice. No, I didn't. That was the Mickey Mouse formation. Boom, there you go. Okay, I um, didn't cheat. Also worth noting that each coin that we pick up for a level 1 scenario is worth 2 gold. So I picked up 1 coin, so I grabbed 2 gold, and you picked up 3, so you should be at 6. I'm at six gold. Alright, I think that's all of our bookkeeping. So, like Kevin said, thank you for joining us. Uh, there's hopefully going to be a whole lot more of these, maybe with some other jackals jumping in and out. That is the great thing about Gloomhaven. It is super drop-in, drop-out, so anybody can come in at any time and have some fun. Uh, but yeah, guys, until the next time, we'll see you later. Laters!